All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. This is the third part on the series on upgrading the suspension for my Dodge Challenger. Now, the first two videos, we covered the upper and lower control arms from QA1, as well as the Borgeson uh, power steering box that I got from Bergman Autocraft. So today, we're gonna go over the rest of the components and why I chose all of them versus the competition. So for starters, we went ahead and we are continuing with the QA1 theme with their adjustable strut rods. Now, I went ahead and got these just because um, I went ahead and got the control arms from QA1. Now, there was there is one part on these that I'm not super sold on yet, and that's the fact that it does have heim joints. If you watch my video on the upper control arms, you know I'm not a big fan of having the uh, heim joints on the suspension components, but I feel that these are gonna have less stress on them compared to the uh, upper control arms. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that assumption, but we're gonna find out. Now, the purpose of the strut rods, in case you don't know on the Mopars, is it keeps the lower control arm uh, in alignment, so that way, because um, they only have a single mounting point, unlike the upper control arms. And so, with these being adjustable, because the factory ones aren't, it gives you the ability to make sure that there's no binding in that front suspension travel. And so we're gonna go ahead, get these installed, and hopefully they work out as well as I think they do. And if not, if I do have problems with these time joints, well, I'll definitely let you know, and we'll go from there, because uh, there are other options out there for adjustable uh, strut rods. Now, from here, the next component on the list I've got here on my table is new torsion bars. Now, the one thing, these are, I ordered these from Bergman Autocraft. They are made by Swayaway. Um, these are 1.14 inch diameter torsion bars compared to I think my factory ones are like 0 0.92, 0 0.94, somewhere in that range. And so these are a lot larger in diameter and the wheel rate is a lot higher. So the factory ones that I've got on there now are probably about 130 pound wheel rate where these new ones are 275. So it's more than double the wheel rate. So it's definitely gonna stiffen up the suspension on this car. Now. My big concern with going with a bar this large was the ride height and the adjustability. And talking to, to Peter Bergman about it, and he said that these are the best torsion bars that he's been able to find for these applications to give your car a more modern feel on the driving. And he assured me that I wasn't gonna have any issues with getting the ride height where I wanted it, either at a factory height or even slightly lower than stock. So we're gonna find out, we'll get these installed, and. Uh, Go from there on the adjustability on getting the right height where we want. So stay tuned for that as well in the future video. So talking to him, I was definitely reassured by uh, going with these bars because I was originally planning on only going with like a 1.03 inch bar, with which is definitely a higher wheel rate, but still wasn't going to be crazy heavy. And so I went with Bergman. I trust him. I've seen him around on the forums and on social media and stuff a lot and trust his judgment on these cars. Uh, another option for uh, torsion bars is uh, Firm Fields, another company that I trust a lot with and they have a variety of different wheel uh, rates available as well. And so we'll see how these go. And if I'm not happy with these ones, then maybe I'll just end up ordering a different diameter from Firm Field and we'll go from there. But for now, I'm very excited about these. I can't wait to get these installed, so we'll see how that goes. Now, Firm Feel, I did order a bunch of stuff from them as well, uh, namely my new front sway bar. So, we've got this guy right here. The factory front sway bar is a one in, or is a seven eighths inch diameter. This one is one and a quarter inch, so it's definitely a lot larger, definitely a lot beefier, so we're gonna give this guy a whirl. I thought about ordering one from QA1, uh, but reading on their website, the one that they offer uh, only works with their K member. They said it wouldn't work with the stock one, so I didn't order there. So I went with Firm Field because I know and trust them as well as a brand. So they, not that one, this one. So they come with all new mounts and stuff, of course. They have nice Zerk fittings so you can grease the, um, the poly bushings in the future and stuff. Works out really well. So we'll see how that install goes. Um, Got new end links front and rear. that are nice poly uh, bushings on them as well, all new hardware. I also went ahead, my car's already factory equipped with a rear sway bar from that stock, and it's a three quarter inch. I thought about changing it out with one that's a larger diameter, but doing some more research and stuff, 
it felt like this three quarter inch OEM was going to be sufficient, but I just need to get new end links as well as new uh, bushings. So firm feel of course came through with these new bushings with new mounting brackets and everything again with the Zerk fittings. So we're gonna get these guys installed. So all new hardware, just going to retain the stock OEM bar. Now from here, we did also order from firm feel these new steering rods with the tie rod ends and their seamless tubed um, bars. Now these, what's nice is the factory ones, of course, are split up the middle and then you have clamps on the ends and they're just a little flimsy. So this is a lot more rigid, gonna give you better steering feel. And then the factory ones were also 916 and Firm Feel offers both 916 diameter tie rods as well as these larger 11 16 So it's gonna give me that much additional strength in the steering and better responsiveness. So I'm really looking forward to that. And of course they use all Moog tie rods and just nice high quality components. All right, so the last component that for the upgrades are the new leaf springs. Now I've got them sitting back there behind the Challenger right now and they're bound together and really heavy. So we're just gonna leave them back there for right now. But I ordered those from Espo Springs, their website Springs and Things. I'll include a link in the description below to not only their website, but all of these companies' websites that I've been ordering parts from. Uh, I went with them because they've been around uh, for like a lot of these companies for decades and it's a company I trust. Um, I went ahead and asked them if they offer ones that have a higher spring rate compared to the factory ones. The highest spring rate that they offered was the OEM Hemi uh, springs. So I went ahead and got those with the factory ride height arches. Uh, I went that route because I didn't want the car sitting too much lower than it already is. And so I went that route. Uh, companies like Hotchkiss, I believe, offer leaf springs, but I believe it's, uh, when I've seen those on cars, it brings the car's ride height down lower and I don't want the car any lower. Um, and I'm not sure, I haven't done, I haven't checked with Hotchkiss because once I saw them on a car and saw the car lower and I didn't look and see what their spring rates are. So they might be a heavier spring rate than what the Hemi ones are. I'm not sure. Um, I'll do some research in the future and check it out. But for now, get the ones from Espo Springs installed. I'm For the type of driving that I'm gonna be doing, they'll give me the ride height that I want, they'll give me the ride that I want, and so they should work out really, really well. So I'm looking forward to installing those and seeing how that works out. I have seen people go with a mono leaf um, spring and they look really trick. The problems I see is one, you have to get a little creative on how to get them to mount, and then uh, I've also heard they're a little more, um, impact sensitive so they're not as durable of course as the metal springs now i've seen people have been running those for decades without issue but that seemed a little more involved than i wanted to get with on this stage in the game on upgrading the suspension of this car now you're probably thinking there's one part that i have missed and that's the shocks and all this and you're right but at the same time no so let me explain i I've already upgraded the shocks on this car. So I went ahead a couple of years ago and replaced the shocks that I had on there with the Bilstein shocks that are offered by Race Car Dynamics and have had great success with them to date. So that's what I've got on the car already. So I don't have to replace shocks again because I've got fairly new upgraded Bilsteins already installed in the car. So I'll include links as I mentioned before in the video to all of the different manufacturers and companies in the description below in case you're interested in all of these. Now there are companies out there that that offer complete kits. You can go ahead and you don't have to piecemeal things together and that works great. I, But for me, for what I wanted, piecing things together from the different manufacturers is what worked for me and it's gonna hopefully give me the results I want. We're gonna find out in the next few weeks after I get all this stuff installed if it actually does work out the way I think it's going to. But I'm really excited to get all this stuff installed, see how the suspension and behavior and characteristics of this of the steering and, and handling of this car changes. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And of course, we'll keep you up to date as that as well. So in the next coming videos, we're gonna go ahead, get all the stuff installed, the front suspension, the rear suspension, all of it dialed in, and then take the car out for a spin and see how it does and let you know what I think of the changes. So on that note, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on today's video. If you liked today's video, of course, please hit that like button, give me that thumbs up. It helps me out with that YouTube algorithm. And if you're not already subscribed, I definitely encourage you to do so. It's free to do and it helps YouTube keep you updated with all these videos. And on that note, guys, I will see you in the next video.